In this video, we will be looking at numbers, strings and boolean in Python. Ok, so let's start up with numbers. So Python has three different kind of numbers. It has int and int is majorly integer and they are whole numbers, positive, negative, without decimal. And then we have floats. Floats are floating numbers uh, with decimals. Uh, they can be negative or positive. And then we have the complex type. We will not be talking about the complex type. So let's take a look at an example of numbers. We can have, let's say, length. Length can be 34. Then we can say width 40. So these are examples of integers. And you can print your result. Let's say length and width. So that can just come out as it is there. And it's pretty straightforward. Uh, what about float? How does um, float work? Float is anything that has um, decimal. So in this case, we've successfully converted length to float. So as you can see here now, length is now a float. But you see some strange thing going on with width. Width is saying literal, you know, 40. So you can actually force a particular value to be a particular type. So since we are talking about numbers, we'll be talking about float and integer. When we get to other type, we'll see how we can force a value to become a particular data type. So in programming, that is called casting. So you are making sure that the value of what you want is what it is that you want. So in this case, if you wanted an integer for which to be an integer, you could do something like this. And um, what you've done is you use a function called int to force your width to become an integer, which doesn't really change anything. Only that in this case, it's just being sure that your variable width is now an integer. So let me show you where it will make more sense. So let's say we have another variable that says area and um, that variable you can then do length times breadth becomes your area. But in this case, you will agree with me that your area will always be a float because when you multiply an int with a float, you still get a float because of the decimal place. So it's possible that you want to make sure that your integer becomes your integer. You don't want a floating value in whatever you have here. So what you can do with that is to have something like say an int here. So what you are doing in the instance is that you are converting your result to become an integer. What that means is it will not have a floating value. That's what you are trying to say here in an instance. So in this case, you can use this to convert to what you have. And you can also do the same thing to float. So even though it's float, you can still you know specify that it's float because if you multiply this together you have float so this is you explicitly stating that you want this item to be float and it then treats it as such as float because it's possible that the value coming in you might not have access to know the value coming in so in this case you are forcefully defining whatever is here to become float so let's move on to string Strings in Python are surrounded by either single quotes mark or double quotes mark. So let's say, for example, we have name is equal to. So this is a way to define a string, and we've already done this before because that's how we did our hello world. So you can print out your string this way. But this is not the only way you can do this. You can also use a single quote because this is me using a a double quote, you can also use a single quote to define your string. This is based on preference. So whatever you, you know, you are most comfortable with, you can use that to define that. So another thing you can do with your string is that you can assign multiple line string to a variable by using triple quote, just like we're doing comments. So you can do something like this. So in this case here, you can then have like something like this. So you can do something like this and then then this becomes a multiple line string which you can always have your results in this you know manner notice how your strings are preserved your spaces are preserved so strings comes with an ability for you to manipulate them by default strings are objects even though we also integers are objects but strings are unique objects in the sense that every character here 
has its own container. If you know what an array is, just look at this as an array. Even though we are still coming to talk about array, if you have an idea what an array is, strings are like array as well. So moving on to um, properties of a string, we have something we'll call member functions. And these member functions allow you to manipulate the string in such a way that you could do quite a lot and there are a lot of member functions on strings so we'll just co cover few of them but there are other ones that we'll get to see later as the course progress so let's look at a couple of them that we we'll have here we have capitalize and then when you are assessing member functions because they are method you need to assess them with this bracket so anything that is a method you need to assess them with this bracket and pass parameter as need be in this case capitalize does not require any parameter so that's why we don't need to specify anything inside here we also have counts and what count does is to count the number of character in the string so in this case let's count how many times i was mentioned so i will just say i here and then when we run this it will tell us how many times i was run so if we go this you can see it say two that's the two times i was mentioned so let's do something else let's look at upper what does upper does what does lower do what does tight to do let's run this and then let me explain them so upper convert your string to uppercase lower does the opposite tight to make sure that the first word is capital letter and that's what tight to does one thing i mentioned the last time is casting ability for us to cast numbers you notice that we're able to cast float to integers and integers to float so in this case i want to be able to cast number to string and i will tell you why i want to do that so notice in this part what we have two here i want to express myself and say two eyes was detected so if i try and do that i have already been able to write two here and i want to be able to specify the next thing so another thing is that you can use plus to actually concatenate strings together so if i run this it will eventually give me an error and the reason why that's an error is because this is an integer whenever we run this count the count returns an integer and um, you can see that in our description of what count does um, it's very important that you should use the information provided by the IDE. So on me checking, you can see the result. It says it's an integer. So what that means is that you cannot combine an integer with a string. If you try to print something else and use plus, it will do the concatenation for you. Because plus is for adding and concatenating strings together. So in that sense, how can we convert a number to a string? is by using str so i'm gonna use str and convert this whole thing here this whole thing that is having issue i'm converting it to a string so thereby introducing something new and that is string function so it converts whatever it is into a string so if we run it again you will notice it now says two eyes was counted uh, the next example i want to do is to do find what does find do find also allows you to specify a string and it will tell you where that item was found so let's look for Ola for example it's gonna tell you that it was found in seven so if you count the index from zero this will give you seven you can also use another function called replace so pretty straightforward you can find an item and you replace it with, an, with something else so let's look for Michael and replace it with James we also have splits split is interesting what it does is that it converts your string to uh, a list or an array um, you guys should not you know worry we're gonna do a real life example of all these features the idea is that I'm showing you what is available or what you can perform on a string it's good for you to know what is possible so that when you are actually finding um, an answer to a solution you can use all the methods that is at your disposal instead of you doing something new z fill what is z fill z fill is very useful if you are creating a data where you have like serial number and uh, maybe you have um, 1000 
let me call this number and this can be used you know um, to set an id so you want to fill the prefix of this item with zeros you want to have 00100 so you can use this function i'm about to show you to do that in other programming language you will have to create a function for yourself to actually do that so it's called z fill and uh, you specify the length of the number that you want so if you say five for example so that will be five character long so if you run this you will see it has 00100 so we can run this for the rest so imagine you are creating a dynamic account number for people and you want to maintain that length of text and uh, finally we want to talk about string format so string format so let me do a message example to actually explain the string format so i have this message here and the reason why i did it like this is such that i want some parts to be a variable uh, i'm sure that you guys have received mail whereby you will see maybe a newsletter sent to you I um, hope you know that, that those newsletters are not crafted, sent to you alone. They are sent to millions of people. And this can be an example of such kind of a newsletter. In this case, there will be a data somewhere where the system will be checking the name of who it is and then this message will be built up and sent to the, those respective people. So what I want to show you now is how to do you know, a format where you can format the message and replace you know these names because these names now are kind of fixed in the system so let's say we have the name of the person to be here which is james and then i have another variable which is time to leave i will call that 12. so let's leave it as number and then i have number of items so now i want to slot the name time and number of items into this variable into this string literal how do i do that uh, number one to do that i need to first change all these to this value i need to use this parenthesis because i'm about to feed in my own data into it i will need to change those value to that and once i've done that i then need to be able to tell the system that this name put it here this time put it here number of items put it here that's the next step i need to do and um, what will i use to do that is called format so i can do results equal to i then do my message dot format so what that format does is that it accepts the variable that you want to replace inside these parentheses so the variables that we're interested in is name the next one is time and the final one is number of times let's now go ahead and print our results and see what the output will look like so if you run this you should have dear james leave the office by 12 and pick up three items from the store william in python is uh, true or false let's say it so it's not just true like this it has to be capital letter t true right this is how it works so you can also do force and again capital letter f and you will use this in conditional statements we are not there yet you use it to check um, either a statement or an expression is true or not you can even do that within your print statement you can say it is equal to it you know we are not there yet guys we're not in conditional statements yes but you can see it's telling you that this is actually equal to this is an expression so boolean is a result of um, when you perform an expression is most most of the time you use it to perform expression so it takes two states it's either it's true or false and not its capital letter you have to the first item there is capital letter another thing you need to look about in boolean is that it has a bool function uh, the bool function allow you to evaluate a value into either true or false what does that mean so you can evaluate so if you say bool as i said bool is a function it accepts anything whatever you pass there it's, it's going to determine if that thing is true or not so let's say we have j and that's the funny thing about the bool function it's going to say true 
So anything that has a value will be a true apart from zero or blank. So this will be a false because it's blank. Then this will be a false because it's zero. Then anything one, two, three like this because it has something is a true. And um, there are quite a lot of examples, you know, that are out there that you can use because we've not talked about other type. We'll just ignore those other type. These are another type. This is an empty collection. Also, uh, you can also provide an array because it's empty. It will tell you false. But if it has data inside, it will tell you true. Mm -hmm.